We are doing another Linux Plus preparation video. Today, we're gonna look at LVM or Logical Volume Manager, which basically allows us to take a bunch of hard drives and kind of put them together in a big old data bucket and then carve off pieces to use as block devices, kind of like hard drives on our system. We're gonna learn what they are and how to do it. And like I said, this is part of the CompTIA Linux Plus certification course. Uh, but even if you're not looking to actually get certified, this is a great way to learn the essentials of Linux administration. Now, this is from Objective 1.3. I'm calling it Objective 1.3.2 because I break the objectives up into smaller chunks. And like I said, we're looking at LVM today. Uh, rather than just go through this list, let's dive right in and see how it works. And then we'll actually uh, do it together. Now, as always, this couldn't happen without my Patreon supporters and people like you who click the like thing and subscribe and tell your friends about these videos. If you find them useful, maybe someone else will too. So thank you again to my Patreon supporters who not only support me, but get some extra stuff too. Like there's all kinds of crazy stuff that you get when you first sign up. And a lot of times I'll post things on Patreon that I don't post anywhere. Like I just did a bed set that I created, which has nothing to do with Linux, but uh, things like that. If you're curious about other stuff going on in my life, uh, Patreon supporters get a, a creepy inside view. I don't know. <laughs> they get an inside view that other people don't get. So anyway, if, if that interests you, please check out the description to support me. But at the very least, if you click the thumbs up and you share this video with somebody or this series with somebody, it would really help me out. So let's get right down to business. What is LVM? And kind of like I alluded to, LVM is just a way to get physical volumes or PVs. They can be hard drives, and that's what they're going to be for us, just little tiny virtual hard drives connected to our system. Uh, so they can be drives, or you could partition it up and use a partition as a physical volume, uh, or ideally you would use a RAID device as your physical volume because I'm gonna talk about in a second, unfortunately, LVM does not offer any protection. So if one of these drives goes bad, you could lose all of your data and that's a real bummer. So physical volumes, it can be a number of things, but basically you add those together into a volume group. So here, these drives that we have over here, we basically just put them together into a volume group. And if each one is 10 gigabytes, that means our volume group is 30 gigabytes. Again, there's no protection. It just puts them end for end. It also doesn't offer a speed increase. Like we're going to talk about RAID in another video, and that has advantages of data protection and also speed increases. Uh, but this is not that. This is just a way to group smaller drives together into a big volume group. It's kind of like uh, just a bunch of drives. You may have heard the acronym JBOD, which stands for just a bunch of drives. And that's kind of the same concept. There's no speed increase. There's no redundancy. Uh, but it allows you to use those drives as one single big chunk. And then the last step of it is after you have this volume group created, you can carve off pieces that are called logical volumes or LVs. And you have this whole 30 gigabytes, you carve off however much you want. Like for example, if we were to carve off a 25 gigabyte chunk of this volume group, uh, it would act like a hard drive on our system that is 25 gigabytes in size. Now, this is a nice way to combine a bunch of smaller data things, but it also has the advantage that these things can be resized. You can add another drive later on and expand the volume group. And then of course, expand the logical volumes that you create. So it's really a flexible way to use underlying storage, but I can't not say it again. It does not offer any data protection. So if one of your physical volumes, whether it's a hard drive or a partition or an entire RAID array that you have set up as a physical device or physical volume, if it fails, your entire system fails. The entire volume group is in fail mode, okay? So it's it's not protection, it's just a way to combine and flexibly use and expand a whole bunch of underlying storage. Okay, so that's probably painfully clear, but I wanted to say that before we went in and started making stuff and you made one on your system and then lost a drive and lost all of your data. So the first thing we have to do is decide what we're going to use for physical volumes. Now, I have on this system currently, I have three additional 
additional hard drives that I've installed. They're each 10 gigabyte drives, just like in our in our drawing, in our illustration. Uh, it's SDB, SDC, and SDD. So we're going to use those as our physical volumes or our PVs uh, and creating those as PVs is the first step. Now, I'm going to use the raw devices. There are several ways that you can go about doing it. You can just use the raw device as a physical volume, which is what we're gonna do, um, or you could create a partition in the drive. So something like this up here, SDA1, we could do SDB1 and have it be the full size of the drive. The advantage there is if somebody sees a drive with a partition, they're less likely to assume it's blank, I guess. I don't know, it's kind of a stretch. Usually if I'm going to be using uh, actual block devices like a drive instead of using a RAID device on the back end, um, I'll just use the raw device itself. It gives me the most storage, it's the simplest. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create physical volumes with these uh, three drives. Well, we're gonna do two at first. So to do that, we just say PV, Actually, let's be root first. So sudo su, because all these have to be done as root. These are drive level uh, things that we're going to do. So I'm just becoming root. So right now I am the root user. All the commands that I have could be done with sudo, but we can just do them without sudo since we have become the root user. Uh, anyway, uh, pv create, and then the devices that you want to create physical volumes out of. So in our case, it's going to be dev sdb dev sd. C. Okay, remember I said we we're just going to do two at first. Anyway, we could put the whole list on there. We could do them one at a time. We could say PV create dev SDB, enter PV create dev SDC, enter. We can just put them all on the same line too, though. And then it's created both of those volumes, SDB and SDC. We can actually use the command PV display to show all of the devices, all the new physical volumes that we have. And we have two of them. We have one named dev sdb, one named dev sdbc, and they're uh, 10 gigabytes in size. So uh, these physical volumes are now created. Okay, so the next step, if you remember our slide, is to create a volume group. And I know you're like, Sean, we forgot a drive. I'll get back to that in just a second. I wanna show you how flexible it is. So uh, in order to create the volume group, we actually do VG create, and then we have to think of a name for it. Um, I'm just gonna call it drive bucket, all right? Cause it's literally like a bucket full of like drives. So VG create drive bucket. And then we say which devices, which physical volumes we want to actually add to this drive bucket. And for us, it's gonna be dev SDB and dev SDC. So I'll do that. Now it says the volume group was successfully created. And can you guess the command that we use to see the contents of the volume group? We do VG display and it should show us. Now we have a volume group named drive bucket. It has um, two drives in it. And because each drive is 10 gigabytes, that means we have 20 gigabytes of storage in there. But oh yeah, we have a third drive. Well, that's okay because this is so flexible. What we can do is go back and create another physical volume. So we're gonna say PV create dev SDD. So we've created that extra drive, right? And then what we can do is VG extend. Okay, so VG extend is going to allow us to add another physical volume to our volume group. All right, so we want to extend which volume group? Drive bucket. And which device do we want to extend it with? Our new one, dev SDD. Okay, and now if we do VG display, now we're gonna see we have three devices in there. And so now we have 30 gigabytes of storage available in our group, right? All three of those drives are now in there. And so we have um, all of our physical volumes created and added to a volume group. The last step is to create the logical volumes or the LV. And that's just slicing out a chunk of that of 30 gigs of available space. Okay, so what we're going to do is LV create. I know, I love that the commands are so clearly uh, named, right? I mean, it's pretty clear what you're doing you know, when you type out the name of the command. Uh, this one is a little bit more complicated because we have to tell it like sizes and stuff. So we're gonna say dash capital L and then how big we want it. Um, I wanna give us a little bit of room to grow. Spoiler alert, we're gonna grow this volume in a minute, or this logical volume next, but uh, let's say 25 gigs is how big we want it because that will that will require all three of our drives to a degree, right? Because uh, each drive is 10 gigabytes, 25 is more than two of them. So 25 gigabytes will take a good chunk out of all 
three of those drives that are in the volume group. So uh, that big and then dash N, what do I want to name it? Uh, let's call it big chunk. Okay, so dash N and then the name of the logical volume that we're going to create and it's big chunk. And then we have to tell it uh, what volume group to come out. Of. Well, we only have the one, but it's or which volume group, I don't know what I said there, but which volume group, and it's called drive bucket. Okay, so the logical volume big chunk was created. Now, if we do, guess what the command is here? Of course, LV display, it's going to show us all of the logical volumes on the system. And in our case, that means we have one called big chunk, and it's 25 gigabytes in size. And it now has a logical volume path of dev drive bucket big chunk. And if we are uh, creating a, a file system, which we're gonna do like maybe in the next video even, uh, this is the device that we would use. Kind of like if you were formatting a partition of dev SDA1, that's the name of the part, or that's the, the device that you would uh, format. In this case, dev drive bucket big chunk is what we would format and put a file system on because that is our block device that we're going to use. Even though it's spread across multiple physical volumes, uh, this is the single device that that the system sees as its um, as its block device. So that's where it lives. I mean, we can look in there. Dev drive bucket. Look at that. Big chunk is our uh, block device that we can use. And now we do have 30 gigabytes in our volume group. So what if 25 gigabytes wasn't quite big enough? Well, then we can use a command and you're not going to be surprised by this command LV extend and then dash L and how much we want to expand it by. So I'm going to say plus uh, three gigabytes. We don't have a whole lot of space, but uh, th there should be enough space left in our volume group to add three gigabytes to it. And then we say, which device do we want to LV extend? Which logical volume do we want to extend? Well, it's that dev drive bucket, big chunk. So that is the device we want to extend by three gigabytes. If we press enter, Boom, there it goes. Now, there's actually a really cool thing here. Uh, when you use LV Extend on, a f like if you've already installed a file system on dev drive bucket big chunk and you want to expand it, you can also expand the underlying file system in one step if you add the dash R flag. So if we would have done LV Extend dash capital L plus three G and then uh, dash R, that would resize the file system as well. This doesn't have a file system on it right now for us, so that doesn't make any sense. But I just wanted to add that because it's kind of a cool feature. Uh, you can extend the file system using file system tools, uh, but it's nice to be able to do things in one step. Okay, and now if we do LV display, we should see that our, our logical volume is now 28 gigabytes in size, still located in the same place. We just expanded that logical volume. And now there is one more tool, and I have to be honest, I've never actually used it uh, in practice, you know, as my system administrator jobs have done. Uh, but LV change is specifically mentioned in the objective. So uh, one of the probably more common things you might do with it is to activate or deactivate a logical volume. And what I mean by that is, so we look at our logical volume uh, display right here. If you look, it says that the LV status is available. Well, if we wanted to change that, if we wanted to take it offline so that it wasn't a scene by the kernel, we could say LV change dash A for uh, available and then no. So available no, or we could say available yes, but we're gonna say available no, and then which device, and that's gonna be dev uh, drive bucket big chunk. If we do that, and now we do LV display, it should show us uh, that it is not available, okay? So it's really important that now it's not there for us to mount on the file system. It's not there for us to uh, put a file system on. It is just not available. We've taken it offline. If we wanted to change that, we could say uh, dash A Y for yes. And now if we look at LV display, it's available again, and it's there so that we can do it. It just tells the kernel whether or not this particular logical volume is available or not. And there's lots of other tweaks you can make using LV change, but I just wanted to give you an example of what it might do, what you might do with it, and that is to take a logical volume offline.
Now, I know I went over things a lot quicker than normally I would, but every single step along the process is so similar, right? I mean, PV create, PV display, VG create, VG display, LV create, LV, um, LV display. So it's very, very easy to play with. So that's what I encourage you to do. I mean, I always encourage you to play with these concepts so that you really get it in your head, but uh, make a couple of virtualized hard drives and then put them in a logical volume, carve it up, uh, delete them, see if you can figure out how to delete it. Uh, it's not difficult either. Uh, and then uh, make sure you're comfortable with what LVM is. And also one more time, what it's not. It is not a way to protect data. If you use just raw hard drives as your physical volumes, if one of them fails, the entire volume group and all those logical volumes are uh, ruined, right? It's spread across a bunch of drives, so it's all ruined. So you want in a production system um, to have those physical volumes actually be like on a RAID device. So if you lose a drive, the physical volume still functions maybe a little bit slower until you get it rebuilt. But anyway, that's important to understand. But uh, LVM just allows you to uh, use all of your storage kind of in a big group and carve it up as you need it. Anyway, I encourage you to learn everything do what you love, and most importantly, be kind. I'll see you in the next video.